Hi there, William with Common Motor, that's common-motor.com. Today we're going to go over the procedure for adjusting the cam chain, inspecting the cam lobes, and adjusting the valve clearance on this Honda CB450. It's the same procedure for CL450s and 500Ts, so stay tuned. Alright, so this is a 1974 Honda CB450 that we're using on our long haul project. So a lot of the parts are off the engine already. Uh, but to do this stuff, you'll need to take off a couple of specific covers. Uh, the stator cover here, and be careful because some oil is going to drain out. Um, both of the valve covers, this one on this side and uh, on the back of the engine. Uh, you'll need to take off the points cover, uh, remove the spark plugs, not only so you can feel where the compression stroke is, but so you're not fighting against the compression when you're turning the engine over by hand. Uh, and it also makes it a lot easier to do all this stuff if you pull the tank off the bike. Now the first step in this whole process is adjusting the cam chain. And in order to do that, the engine needs to be rotated to a specific spot. And that's 90 degrees past top dead center uh, on the compression stroke of the left cylinder. Brendan has a little trick on how to remember where that spot is, so let's get with him on that. Okay, what I want to do here is I'm going to make an index mark for the location to do the cam chain adjustment. <clears throat> it, it was never marked from the factory on, on the rotor here, so we're gonna make our own mark using a punch. Uh, so next time we do this, it's gonna be a lot easier. We have a reference. So uh, on, on one side I have my LT mark here, which is this straight line, and then 180 degrees from it, I have my T mark right here. Well, our index mark is gonna be halfway in between, 90 degrees, kind of somewhere in here. Uh, my bolt is, has a center kind of dimple in it. I just have a, a simple protractor here and I'm going to kind of do my best at lining it up. It, it, it needs to be close but not, you know, 100%. Uh, I'm pretty, let's line up at that line there. That says I'm kind of somewhere in this neighborhood of about right here. So that's going to be probably close enough. Let's go ahead and put a mark on there. And this is an automatic center punch, but you can just use a regular punch and a hammer. And so now I have this little tiny little dimple mark here that I'll use as my index. Let me just check it the other side. I bet you I'm pretty sure I nailed it. Let's see here. 90 degrees. Yeah, it's about right. It's going to be close enough for what we need. So uh, that will be our index mark for setting the uh, cam chip adjustment. So something helpful down, for down the road. All right, so to adjust the cam chain, we need to get the engine in, uh, in, in that specific spot I mentioned, which is 90 degrees past top dead center on the compression stroke of the left cylinder. Now the LT mark here on the rotor indicates top dead center on the left cylinder. So let's try to find the compression stroke here. All right, so there's LT, but there was no compression out of the spark plug hole that I can feel with my finger. So let's keep going. 360 degrees, there it is. You can feel it pushing on you, you know, pressure inside the cylinder. So we know that we're there. And so we're going to go 90 degrees past that to our index mark. And that's where we want the engine to stay. Uh, we do this so that at this point all the valves are closed. Uh, there's no pressure or load on the camshaft and therefore no, you know, pressure on the cam chain, which would then allow the adjuster to take up all the actual slack in the chain. All right, so now that the engine's in the correct place, uh, we're gonna go ahead and adjust the cam chain, which is done by this uh, spring-loaded plunger inside this housing that just pushes on a wheel that tightens up the cam chain. So in order to do that, you loosen the jam nut on the adjuster here, which is just to keep the, uh, keep the set screw in, in place. Once you back this off a little bit, you can back out the actual screw. You may or may not hear a thud, which didn't. All right, that's it. You just tighten it back down again. It's an automatic cam chain adjuster, so it shouldn't take uh, anything other than that.
All right, so now that the cam chain has been adjusted, we're gonna inspect our cam lobes, which are uh, right here inside the valve cover. Uh, so we'll rotate the engine over. You wanna look for any scuffs or burns or major smears. Um, you can, you know, run your finger along it to see if anything catches. Uh, this cam lobe actually looks like it's in pretty good shape. So from here, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, inspect the rest of the lobes and move on to the valve adjustment. We want to show you on the bench what the the 450 kind of rocker adjustment looks like because it's hard to see in the engine. So we have our, our rocker, which is actually more of a follower. And this is the shaft that the, the rocker arm actually pivots on. When you're making the valve adjustment, what we're actually doing is we're, we're turning the shaft here. And when we turn the shaft, and you can kind of see it there, we move the position of the rocker arm, or I'll take it off. We can see that the shaft itself is not um, centered. You can see how it's an eccentric. You can see this, this, you know, it's offset right there. Right, it's offset. And as you turn it, the, the, the rocker arm tends to wiggle back and forth like that. So that's what we're actually adjusting is the position of the rocker arm in relation to the valve tip and where the cam touches right here. So here's the cam. The cam would be over it. Let's do that side of it. Just to err, get the camera angle here. That's gonna be the setup there. Let me rotate it that way, you guys can see it better. That's what's actually happening is the cam is riding and turning and pushing on the rocker. And what we're adjusting is the distance between the pad here and the lobe. That's where our adjustment is happening, is between the, the back side of the cam lobe, so not the top where it's you know the peak, but we call it the back side of the lobe where it's low, and the rocker uh, pad. So that's where our adjustment's happening, but I want to show you on the bench here, since it's way more difficult to see um, in the motor as we're doing it, but that's our adjustment, what we're making happen. We're gonna pop it in a, a cylinder head here, and you can actually see it move around. All right, so what we have right now is we have the rocker arm. Here's our rocker. It's in the head, it's touching the top of the valve, but we don't have the camshaft in there yet. But this is the, the motion that the rocker arm has. You can see how it's, as I turn the shaft, the back of the rocker arm moves and it kind of changes the relative position of the pad. In fact, if I turn it all the way around, it does this number, it's an eccentric. When the cam's in it, it's not gonna go all the way around, but just want to show you that's the motion that is actually being adjusted when you are setting the valves here. I'm going to throw a cam in it real quick and you'll actually see it with the whole camshaft set up. So a few details I want to point out. We have the cam in the motor and if we look at the end of the shaft here, we have this little like tick mark on it, okay? This is an index mark about to show you an approximate position of where this is supposed to be. Now if I rotate this the, the rocker arm is going to move, and it's going to go so far it's going to want to stop. That's the rocker hitting the, uh, the cam. And that tick mark is now facing, I call it outwards, away from the spark plug. However, since this is an eccentric, if I rotate this all the way around, I, there's another spot where it also touches right here because it's going to make a complete circle. But notice the tick mark is facing in. Now, technically, the valve will adjust in either spot, but to be correct, those tick marks should always be pointing, I call it outwards or away from the spark plug. So that's really an important detail to remember is tick mark pointed away from the spark plug uh, when you are making your adjustments because you can have it 180 degrees out, just like that. So actually we're gonna be looking in the motor now. And we got the cam in, this is my, my cam lobe. The, the high spot in the lobe, and I'm on the base circle of the cam, and I'm just gonna kind of wiggle that back and forth, you'll actually see the, the rocker arm move. And so here's the adjustment. My feeler gauge, let me get my feeler gauge between the rocker and the cam, and I'm gonna turn it until I find that spot where it just wants to grab. So it's kind of loose here. The cam shaft's a little loose because I don't have a chain on it, but just grabbing here, and then I'm gonna turn it, and then right here, it's tight. You can feel it on the gauge. Loosen it up a hair. Here's the gauge. Tight. It's, 
it's there. Now, nobody be doing this with the screwdriver. And once I find that that sweet spot where I want it, you know, there's a nut that's on here. The nut and washer. Nut. Nut and washer right there. I actually just threw it all out right there, but it's okay. This is just kind of a mock up. That's the spot it wants to be in. So my gauge just wants to slide out right there. And then I would take a wrench and tighten that nut. This is what we'll actually do on the bike, but uh, that's just kind of a, a rough idea. This is what we're doing when we're actually adjusting on the bike. Let's try to find that spot where that feeler gauge just slides in there with a little bit of friction. I find the, on the 450s it's actually easy to take the, ga the, the feeler gauge and kind of follow the radius of the cam lobe here to get it into the under the rocker arm and you end up kind of having a setup where you're, you're, you're kind of angling that feeler gauge and getting it in there between the rocker. A little bit easy. But we wanted to show you on the bench how it was done just so it's a bit easier to understand because once we're on the motor doing it it's a bit more difficult. So that's the kind of the rough adjustment process there is a sequence on the bike all right to adjust the valves you want the engine rotated to top dead center on the compression stroke of whichever side of the engine you're working on so since we're going to start with the left side of the engine uh, i'm going to feel for the compression rotate the engine over until the lt mark or left top mark is aligned with our index and i can feel compression on my finger. Now once you get the engine where you want it, it's going to want to slip out from its spot. So you might have to, you know, get the wrench and kind of jam it or zip tie it uh, or just hold it in place while you do the adjustment or have your friend do it. Alright, so now that we have the engine rotated to the proper spot to adjust uh, this uh, intake valve for the left cylinder. Um, we're going to get our feeler gauges out. Um, now it's a lot easier if you take your individual feeler gauge off of the bundle uh, to get it, you know, just to just to use it. It's much easier than to use the whole thing. Now from the factory, uh, these the valve clearance for this motorcycle was way too tight. It was, um, you know, 1.2 thousandths of an inch. Uh, we recommend a much looser valve on these bikes, uh, three thousandths, uh, and we like to use the overshoot method, with which you know involves using a, a one step larger, one size larger feeler gauge, so that you can, um, you know, once you're tight on that, and then you're a loose, you know, if you're a tight four, you're a loose three, in other words. So uh, I have a I have a four thousandths feeler gauge here. Uh, I'm going to follow the lobe around to where the the valve is here. I crack this lock nut loose. Oh, it was already loose. But make sure the lock nut around it is loose. And then you just rock the uh, eccentric rocker shaft back and forth until you feel it pinch down on the feeler gauge. Not so that it's jammed in there, but that you can feel some resistance as you move it around. And you go ahead and tighten and the lock nut back down on it. A little bit too tight. If you, as you turn the lock nut, if you feel the feeler gauge getting jammed in there, it's because the shaft is turning as you're turning the lock nut. There we go. Here's a three. If we go to put the three in there, you can feel. A little bit of resistance, but it's a, it's a, that's right. Now that this intake valve is done, we're going to do the exhaust valve on the left hand cylinder and then rotate the engine again uh, to do both valves for the right side. All right, so for the exhaust valve on the left cylinder, um, the adjuster is under the points cover. So just make sure you, you have that cover off. And so we're going to get in here. Feel that, loosen the lock nut. Got our number four feeler gauge. We're just gonna get it in there until it's nice and snug. 
I'm going to tighten it back down again, lock it down. Oh, see, it moved. Like it always does. So let's get it where we want it. Now be careful not to let your feeler gauge fall in the engine. Now, how I'm doing it right now doesn't look like I'm being very careful. but There we go. Nice and snug so that a three fits in there just right. All right, now we're gonna rotate the engine to the T mark, then the compression stroke on the right side, and uh, adjust the right hand valves. There it was. So the T mark lines up for the right side cylinder, and I can feel the compression stroke at the spark plug hole. All right, so while you got all this apart, after you've adjusted your, uh, your valve clearance and you're about to put everything back together, it's not a bad idea to get some uh, engine assembly lube on these cam lobes. So when you go to fire this bike up, again, after it's been disassembled and everything, um, you're not fighting all that, all that friction of a dry lobe on a rocker. You can also take your uh, little oil pumper can here and get in there on the cam chain and everything. Just get everything real, real lubricated. So to recap, the first step in this process is adjusting the cam chain. Uh, if you haven't inspected your cam lobes, make sure to take a look at them. Make sure they're in good shape before you continue. And then the second step is adjusting your valve clearance. Now on any bike, but especially this one, better to err on the looser side uh, in terms of valve clearance. Um, loose valves might be a little bit noisy, but a tight valve will ruin your engine. So um, thanks for watching. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our newsletter and our YouTube channel. Uh, I'm William with Common Motor. Uh, be sure to follow us along with this uh, long haul project, and we'll see you next time.